Hello class, thank you so much for watching this before coming on February the 20th, 2014. It seems that we can't always cover everything in class that we would like to, and so I'd like to experiment with putting up just a short video for you to watch before coming to class. You have no homework associated with this video, you just need to watch it. So I hope that you have found time to do that. Our next assignment that we are going to do in class has to do with personification. What is personification? Well, it's when you take something that is inanimate, it does not live, and you bring it to life. One of the best movies that does this is Toy Story. All these toys come to life. They have emotions, they have feelings, they have some sort of mentality. Some are smarter than others, of course. At any rate, they are personified. And in fact, if you look in scripture, you will find that there are a lot of personifications in scripture. In fact, sin is often personified. Genesis 4, 7 says, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you. Or in Romans 5, 21, sin hath reigned unto death, reigned as in being a king. Or Romans 6, 14, sin is a master. We are the slaves often, too often, to our sin, aren't we? Other things that are personified in scripture, one of them is riches. You cannot serve two masters, either God or mammon or money. That's what that means. Wisdom. Wisdom hath builded her house. Proverbs 9.1. Jerusalem also is personified. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, in Isaiah 52, verse 1. And then finally, we'll share this one from Psalm 98, 8. The elements of nature, the floods clap their hands, the hills are joyful. Of course, normally we don't see hills and floods clapping hands and smiling, do we? But in scripture, these things are personified. So personification, you're going to write a personification from a first person point of view. And you'll see here some things that could easily be personified, a dish, a clock, a tree, a newspaper, a coin purse, a book, a car, a pencil. And of course, there are many, many other things that could be personified. These are just some ideas for you. Let's look at an incident. Let's say there's an accident in the middle of the block or in the middle of the intersection. And a young woman is walking her dog and she says, well, I heard the squeal of tires and I looked up just in time to see the silver van strike the pink car. Meanwhile, the driver of the car said, well, she looked both ways and she saw no cars coming and suddenly her driver's side door was hit by this speeding van. And then of course the driver of the van tells the police that, well, I was driving very carefully through the intersection when this pink car came out of nowhere. It just appeared. I couldn't stop in time. And then finally, you have the newspaper boy. He says that the van ran a red light and was speeding. Well, I don't know which one is true. Which one is correct, would you say? Well, what we know is that each person saw the situation from his or her own point of view. And when writing, it's necessary to put yourself in the place of someone, or in this case, something else. In this assignment, you will write from the first person point of view, as though you are in the middle of the action. You are the newspaper, the coin purse, the pencil, the tree. Uh, in fact, right now on KLIN, they are running a radio public service announcement about a medicine cabinet, which is personified. And in the public service announcement, it says, I see you every morning when you look in the mirror. And I also see when your kids get into your drugs, your prescription drugs, your medications, and they shouldn't. At any rate, it's a very effective PSA. It's the first person point of view. Well, all of this means that you will use words like I, me, my, mine, our, and of course, us. This assignment is something that you will write from the perspective of the object that you choose. 
And I'd like you to choose a subject from the list provided on 14-3 in your notebook. And I want you to put yourself in that thing's place and just imagine how you would feel in a given situation. And these are some things to consider now as you put together your short story. First of all, the characters. Besides the item that you choose to personify, you will also need probably a few other people, in quotes, things, personalities in your story. So decide what they will be. Secondly, the setting. Where are you? Are you in a box? Are you in a drawer? Are you on the floor? In a tree? Maybe you're on a shelf or in a store or even a closet or in a particular room. Uh, speaking of drawers reminds me that when we had a little cat named Libby, she was very young, and very small, Evangeline decided to play with the kitty. And Evangeline was very young too, probably three, maybe four years old. And she played with the kitty, and part of her playing was to make a little bed for the kitty in a drawer. Well, she put the kitty in the drawer, the kitty fell asleep, she closed the drawer, and she left the room and totally forgot about the kitty. Hours later, I mean, it must have been four or five hours later, no one could find the cat. We were looking all over the house. Evangeline did not remember that she had put it in the drawer. And finally, someone heard this little meow sound coming from Evangeline's room. And we all tore in there, and there was this kitty in the drawer. She hadn't made a mess. She just decided it was time to get out, and uh, she had taken a good long nap there. Well, maybe you are something that is in a drawer and you would like to write a story about that. How much time is lapsing during your story? Is it something that happened overnight? Did it happen in just a few minutes? Keep the time frame short unless you are maybe a stamp, let's say, and you have to travel some distance and it's going to take you more than a day to get there. Also, consider the plot. What is the main action of your story? And remember, a good story has a bit of conflict in it that needs to be resolved. See if you can come up with something. Finally, personification. What human traits, emotions, and character qualities does your object possess? Something like a washing machine might have a large mouth or a large stomach. A piece of furniture or a watch could have eyes or arms. A needle might be delicate and frail like a grandmother. A hockey puck may be tough and street smart. Or a Lego, a little Lego brick. It might actually be timid and very wary of being stepped on. All right, those are enough ideas for you for now, but I want you to be thinking about this so that when you come to class on Thursday the 20th, you will have thought of something to write about. A few good examples of personification that I know you have read as a little child or have had read to you, one of them would be the story Corduroy. Corduroy is not an animal. Corduroy is a stuffed animal. I don't want you writing about any animals, but you can write about a stuffed animal if you like. And the story of Corduroy would be a very good example of a personification. Another book was actually written by my next door neighbor. His sister gave him a mouse when he was in the army. Actually, he was in the Marines. She sent him a stuffed mouse and she said, would you please write a story from the viewpoint of the mouse? So this neighbor, Eric Littaker, took the mouse and wrote a story about how this mouse was going to make life better for a soldier somewhere overseas. And it really is a very sweet book, a great story. And he totally gets it because he was the Marine overseas whose life was cheered up just a little bit by this cute stuffed mouse that his sister had sent him. At any rate, uh, that's the idea. And I know that you all will come up with something very creative.